Do you want it? Yeah. I better not throw it. <laughs> nice flowers, very nice flowers. Donated by the neighbors? Do we buy them or do we get them from the neighbors? <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. <laughs> Malati, the senior devotee, Mataji, she used to send me on flower missions. Go out and find flowers for the deities. <laughs> one time one devotee came to one house. He saw so many nice flowers. So he knocked on the door and said, could we, you know, we are worshiping the Lord. Can we take some flowers for our worship? The man said, fine. When he came back, the whole garden was gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he looked and he said, there's nothing left. <laughs> you can say that we're popular. <laughs> popular for many of the wrong things. <laughs> We have a, is this, an, this is another volume. Do we have cartels? Cartels, anywhere? Okay. Okay, so. Sri Advaita, Gadadadar Shiva Sadi, 
घोर भक्त चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद घोर भक्त श्री कृष्ण from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and this is uh, 
Madhya Leela, chapter 23, entitled Life's Ultimate Goal. And this is a continuation, and this is verse number 22. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Krishna Sambandi Vina Kala Vyarta Nahiyaya Krishna Sambandi Vina Kala Vyarta Nahiyaya Krishna Sambandi Vina Kala Vyarta Nahiyaya Krishna Sambandha Vina Kala Vyata 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 Krishna Sambandha Vina Kala Vyata Nahiyaya Anybody we miss? Krishna Sambandha Vina Kala Vyata Nahiyaya Krishna Sambandha Vina Kala Vyata Nahiyaya Guru guy, give it a shot. I can't see. Okay. All right. So, Krishna Sambandha Veena, without a connection with Krishna, Kala, time, Vyartha, useless, Nahi Yaya. Does not become. Translation. Not a moment should be lost. Every moment should be utilized for Krishna or connected with Krishna. Please repeat. Not a moment should be lost. Every moment should be utilized for Krishna or connected with him. And Srila Prabhupada's very short purport. Maharaj Pariksit's expression of anxiety is explained in this verse. He says, Let whatever is destined to happen take place. It doesn't matter. Just let me see that not a moment of my time is wasted without a relationship with Krishna. 
One has to tolerate all obstacles on the path of Krishna consciousness. And one should see that a moment of his life is is wasted outside of Krishna. Not a moment of his life is wasted outside of Krishna's service. Om Agyan Tvedandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kedam Mayam Dadati Swapadanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Viranta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pracharine Nirase Sasunivadi Pastyatya De Satarine Pancha Kalpa Tarubischa Kriva Sindhu Peevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namahona Maha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Siva Siddhi Gor Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this statement is the statement of a devotee who knows the value of life. And the value of life is the utilization of time. One who knows how to use time is always successful, even in a material sense. People who are expert time managers, they get a lot done and they achieve many of their goals like that. So, But for a devotee, they understand that two things that are important. One is human life is, is, not, is very rare. This is sometimes it's very hard for devotees to come to this realization that human life is rare. It's just we take it for granted. Because I have a body, a human, and there's so many humans around, and pretty much that's what, that's what we are accustomed to, seeing humans being human, having that body. We don't realize in relationship to all the bodies in existence, at least within the material existence, the human form is always in the minority amongst all of them. There are more birds, trees, plants, creepers, insects, beasts, all of these other forms of life are much more numerous in their varieties and also in their quantity than the human form of life. So in proportion, the human form of life is small in number, but to get a human form of life, it takes a while. One has to go through the evolutionary chain starting with the aquatics and then moving up through the different species of life and then finally coming to the animal species. And then taking birth from the animal species, as Prabhupada said, if you're in the mode of, if you're a cow, then you take birth in the mode of goodness. If you're a monkey, you take birth in the mode of passion. A tiger, you take birth in, from, from the mode of ignorance, uh, passion like that. So these are the higher animal births, these three that are mentioned. Uh, higher animal forms. So to get a human form of life is rare. And so to utilize it in the right way means to understand what it's meant for. We see in comparison to the other species of life that they can enjoy sense gratification much more what we say, constant, and also at the same time much more within that. Pigeon can have sex life 60 times in one hour. Hari Bo. <laughs> Don't say Hari Bo. <laughs> uh, yeah, a bear can sleep for six months at a time. <laughs> An elephant can eat 40 kgs of, uh, you know, foodstuffs. <laughs> in one day. <laughs> so, you know, what else do we have? So many other, a dog, he, he simply by his sense of smell, he can smell something from a, a very far distance, the nature of something. Dogs have a very powerful sense of smell. And so all the animals in their senses, sense proclivities are much more developed than we are. And Prabhupada was even saying that, you know, it's like 
uh, animals have better circulation of blood than humans. <laughs> and he was using the example of uh, you know cats and dogs. Their blood circulation is more natural. <laughs> they don't have problems with high blood pressure. <laughs> they do get sick, but not like that. <laughs> so when you compare the human form to all the other forms in terms of the amount of facility and sense gratification, it's on a low level, it's on a low scale. So we can understand from this comparison and understanding that the human form of life is not meant for sense gratification. It's meant for, as it's explained, in the self-realization. So being short in years, especially in this Kali Yuga, people lived in other Yugas much more, much longer, even in the previous yuga, we hear statements in the Bible. Some of the biblical persons lived 400, 500, 600 years. Now, if somebody lives 100 years, it's considered to be a grand old man, right? Hardly anybody makes it to 100. 100 years is not is hardly anything. So, in the, especially in this particular age, even with all the deficiencies of the material body, it's even more deficient in this age. In terms of memory, uh, bodily strength, compassion, uh, what else? Duration of life. All these things are drastically reduced in this age. And so, to have a human form of life and to be situated in this age of Kali is really, you might say, from the perspective of enjoying the time available and the facilities that we can enjoy, is very hardly anything. So therefore, one can un understand that this is not some accident. The human form of life is not meant to enjoy the senses. Sense enjoyment is there, but only to keep body and soul together. That is required. Prabhupada said, if with no sense of enjoyment, you die. <laughs> you have to have some sense of gratification in life in order for the body to maintain itself, such as eating, sleeping, and uh, also within, you know, there's for those who need it, sex life. That's also, he said, it's a natural proclivity of the human body. So all these things are done simply for maintenance or for stabilization of one's material position, but not done in the form of a sense gratification. So therefore it says here, not a moment should be lay, lost without connect, connection to Krishna. So of course devotees are, are convinced that Krishna is the goal of life. But still, Making, uh, using our time in the best possible way is actually the success or failure of the Krishna conscious, of your execution of Krishna conscious. So Prabhupada would always say, we should always think, am I using this time that is available now in the best possible way? Am I remembering Krishna? Am I serving Krishna? Am I doing something in relationship to Krishna? Or I'm just, uh, you know, use the word spaced out. <laughs> that means in no space at all. <laughs> Somewhere in some ethereal existence <laughs> that has no foundation. <laughs> so, therefore, one issue, one, this is one of the things that I remember when we first joined the Hare Krishna movement, was taught to us very continuously, learn to use every moment for Krishna never have a break in any moment. And following that principle, we, were under, we could understand what the happiness of Krishna conscious, not wasting time with anything else. Of course, in those days, being in those ashrams in those days, we were somewhat insulated from the secular society, protected from outside influences. Of course, occasionally we would go out for books or something but hardly ever, mostly we were within the community. And so that environment was very conducive to using the time, every, all, every bit of time. Here we have a little more freedom and we're more associated with the external energy and the people involved with it. So there's an easy chance for the mind, intelligence, and 
and just activities that get diverted away. But therefore, a devotee has to be very diligent. And one of the ways to, to make it easier to keep focused on Krishna is have a very, have a schedule. In other words, organize your day in such a way that you know what you're going to be doing at every moment during the day. Of course, you may have some times where things come up that need to be done that are not part of your regular schedule, so you plan that also. But at the same time, if you have gaps, then Maya says, oh, Haribo. That means you got time for me now. <laughs> Maya comes along and he gives you so many ideas on what you, how you can use time in her service. Even if it's just wasting time not doing anything in Krishna conscious or do, doing something that is unrelated to all law, it also takes away from the understanding of, of this principle of using time in the best possible way. So, and Prabhupada says here, and he makes one additional point in the purport, that there will be obstacles on the path of Krishna consciousness. <laughs> obstacles are there, and there's, we might say, obstacles that come from the external environment, uh, such as, uh, you know, harassment by other living entities, miseries caused by other living entities, or niceties caused by other living entities that want to divert your attention away from Krishna. Like your friend calls up and says, hey, let's go to the movie. <laughs> it's a good movie now. So, you know, the so-called nice things also are, present themselves as obstacles to our practice in Krishna consciousness. And then, of course, there are internal obstacles, and that is our mind is still somewhat unsteady in our direction. And so it comes up with ideas, thoughts, and ways to, you know, utilize time and energy in other ways other than Krishna consciousness. But with a planned schedule and uh, learning how to use time, in other words, when... If there is a gap in your schedule or there are some opportunities, you can just pick up your bees and chant Hare Krishna. Especially now. It's always good. And just any time you find yourself not doing something that is required, then just pick up your bees, chant Hare Krishna. Or if you want other devotees, sit down and have a kirtan. Prabhupada would say that. He would say, you know, you find time, just sit down, two, three devotees or more and chant like that. So that's the idea, is keep that mind. And then what, is you, what are you doing? You're actually purifying your consciousness, or you're, you're filling the consciousness up with Krishna and Krishna's service. And that is causing the mind to become more and more in that direction. The more we go in another direction and try to come back to the right direction, the harder it is to maintain the right direction when we go away. So the idea is to you learn to use every every moment in the process of Krishna consciousness. And that's an art, Prabhupada said, an art that is taught by the spiritual master. But the principle is, to, is reflection on what am I doing now, how am I using my time? Am I thinking about Krishna or, or am I making plans for sense gratification? Like that. And if we have this practical understanding, we'll always be in the best possible position, even if we forget for a moment or not. Then we remind ourselves, oh, what am I doing for Krishna now? Or what am I, th am I thinking about Krishna? Or am I thinking about sense gratification? Uh, I'm tired, I should take rest. <laughs> and another thing, the mind will tell you, you're tired. A lot of times we're not tired, we just need some exercise. <laughs> That's, yeah. Most of the time when we feel tired during the day, it's just a prob the problem is that we just need some exercise. <laughs> That's usually the case. <laughs> well, of course, being tired at night is also natural because the rhythm of the body works in that way. But during the day, if you feel tired, usually do some exercise. Unless you haven't got enough rest in the evening, then... You may also take a little snap, but don't waste time. Prabhupada made this point so much, so often in his lectures and here, 
It's also mentioned that every moment is valuable. A moment's loss can never be bought back, even by millions and millions of millions of euros. So, so one cannot uh, understand the value of time, especially in the human form of life. And then that one is always in the best position to make advancement in Krishna consciousness and to think of Krishna. There is one very powerful and very, what we say, uh, all sweeping verse in the uh, Padma Purana that what is the greatest anomaly? What is the greatest mistake? What is the greatest misfortune? To forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead for one moment. <laughs> it uses the word greatest in the translation. So it doesn't say it's a mistake, anomaly, it said the greatest. So to forget Krishna for a moment, it's like, whoa, I made the biggest offense. <laughs> or I made the biggest deviation in what is proper consciousness. So we need to practice that. Practice that. And we can fill our day with activities that helps to keep our consciousness focused. Especially now within this particular Time period, which is this week, Jai Panchatattva Ki Jai. This particular time period is considered to be uh, Shravanam uh, Shastra week. Hearing and hearing more and more Shastra, this whole week from the 3rd to the 9th, is, a, is dedicated by the Governing Body Commission to emphasize the importance of hearing and chanting Srila Prabhupada's books like that. So here's a chance to really catch up if we read, read more of Prabhupada's books or hear more lectures given by Prabhupada like that. And that way it fills your consciousness with, you know, transcendental sound vibration. Even if we hear the one lecture, if we hear it over the second time, the third time, fourth time, each time you get something more if you're listening to the lecture. That's the nature of the hearing process. We never fully understand or fully hear everything during a lecture. But when we continue to hear more and more, we get more and more of the, the knowledge that's being emanated from. We'll practice that also, especially in this particular time period. Read more, chant more. Of course, we also have our service, yeah. But our main service is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord because that's the foundation to build our, our consciousness where when we engage in our practical service, we are strong and enthusiastic to do that service. Like that. Okay, so not a moment should be lost. Again, uh, just to mention again, one has to tolerate all obstacles on the path of Krishna consciousness. And then Prabhupada ends it, and one has to see that not a moment of his life is wasted outside of Krishna's service. So these obstacles sometimes are meant, are cause us to deviate, or are trying to deviate our consciousness away from Krishna, like that. But a devotee can learn to see that even obstacles are opportunities for becoming more Krishna conscious when we see that uh, Krishna somehow or other has presented this situation for me to learn something, to become more dependent on him, to remember him more, like that. And he's, so these obstacles are opportunities for spiritual advancement. Like that. Okay, so uh, utilization of time. Time there's an old saying, it's not an old saying, it's just a saying. Time, what does it say? Time, time, no, time, and time, no way for no person. But there's another one. Uh, that's good too. <laughs> oh, okay, I thought of another one. One, here's one. This used to be my favorite one when I was a kid. Uh, still a kid, but <laughs> at least in nature. 
Uh, yeah. One who waits, time is, is, one who, one who waits, time is slow. One who rejoices, time is fast. One who laments, time is so slow. <laughs> One who loves, time is eternal. <laughs> One who loves, time is eternal. <laughs> so yeah, when, when we develop love, then we lose all question of time. Time takes a seat back and love becomes the atmosphere. <laughs> So we're trying to love Krishna and also trying to love his devotees by loving Krishna and serving his devotees. Who oh, is that other one? There's another one, I can't think of it. Doesn't Time keeps moving but doesn't say goodbye, something like that. <laughs> anyway, so there's so many phrases about time. I remember I saw this symposium which was later written in the form of a document on time. And people who attended the symposium were one of the most, one of the most elevated people in the world. They were prestigious doctors, scientists. Dalai Lama was also there. People from many, heads of many religious institutions. They had this huge symposium which went on for weeks discussing what is time. <laughs> And everybody had their opinions and conclusions. I don't know if there was actually a, a agreed on conclusion. I don't think so. All there was was different conjectures, ideas, opinions of what is what is actually time. But Bhagavad Gita says it's easy. Time. Krishna says, "Time, I am. That's me. <laughs> I am time." In the form of, he also says, "Amitra sarva rasya hum." that I am time in the form of death, or death in the form of time. <laughs> okay, so, questions, comments? Utilization of time, or something related? Yes, <laughs> there we have a microphone. A little close, little closer. Today we uh, feel uh, the mouth of us that uh, time is faster. Mm -hmm. What is is this uh, feeling that it's faster? Time is and going faster. too fast. Yeah, too fast. That means you're enjoying. <laughs> time goes fast when you're enjoying. Time goes slow when you're worrying. <laughs> It's not, it's not time is changing, it's your perception. Therefore, part of the understanding of time is the perception of time. Mm -hmm. Time is not this thing on your wrist called a watch. <laughs> time is the, is the feature of the material energy that moves things along. So how it moves things along is also relative to your, how it's perceived is relative to your consciousness. So yeah, just like it says, you know, when in the uh, rasa dance, when Krishna was dancing with the rasa dance, uh, it was one night of Brahma, <laughs> or one yeah one one day of Brahma, one night of Brahma. I'm not sure. And uh, so I mean that's you know millions and millions of years, but it seemed like twenty four hours. That's all. <laughs> So the more enjoyment you are experience, the faster, or the relative concept of time appears to be going fast. Mm -hmm. If you're waiting for something to happen, just like if you're waiting for this class to get over, it's like, it's like, oh man, this time is really going so slow. <laughs> So yeah, so waiting really drags time. I mean, sometimes it even puts time in the stop. Nothing moves, the clock stands still. 
So, yeah, it's all based on your consciousness, how you perceive time, mm -hmm. how time is perceivable by you, <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. Because the, I speak with uh, many people, the retired people, the, the, the same, uh, the same uh, talking about time, they have no uh, more to work or something, and they said, it's no week, it's no month, a year, it's so, uh, so quick uh, mm. going on. People's life patterns also give them a perception of time, just like nowadays. We do so much more within the time we have now than we used to do years ago because life is sped it up by the modern technological. So thing, people change often now, more often. People are doing more things, they're changing more often. So what appears to be like something that happened last year seems like it's like 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Whereas years ago, it was like, oh, that was yesterday. <laughs> so lifestyles and activities also give you a perception of how time is affecting, how you perceive time like that. But ultimately, time is moving to take things away or to bring things about, even one, you know. <laughs> And one more, and the uh, tenth canto I read, I don't know which verse, uh, that uh, time purification, the time is purification, but we, uh, we see today that uh, uh, more time is uh, more polluted is world. We're seeing that more time is? Uh, Last word I missed. Yeah, uh, the, the, time, uh, the time going, and uh, now we see it's not purification, but pollution world. Oh, you're going down instead of going up. Time is, well, that's up to you. <laughs> if you want to get purified, there is a way. If you want to get putrefied, there's a way. <laughs> so you have to adopt the, pri the proper means for purification. But... I know what you're saying, and it's also interesting. You see, when people join the Hare Krishna movement, a lot of times, for many years, they go up, 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 and then after some time, for some reason, they start going the other way. And the reason why is that they remain attached to some material desire. Krishna is always encouraging us to move forward and give up our attachment. But if we keep our attachment, then advancement is, is somewhat slowed and it actually checked in some time. And then we have to move forward only by somehow overcoming that attachment. So a lot of times you see devotees, or because of offenses, that also causes one to go down. So you see that a lot of times people are devotees, for some reason, after so many years in the movement, are no longer active or as active as they were. <laughs> and sometimes they're, you know, because sometimes they see, or they wrongly see spiritual life in the same way as they see material things. <laughs> but we have to learn to do each, each thing that we do every day and not keep thinking, I have to find something new to do in order to be happy. That's the material concept. Devotees should think in terms of quality. I should put quality as the foremost focus in whatever I'm doing, and then you'll start to see how everything becomes less, and becomes more and more interesting, challenging and interesting, and purifying like that. You know, if you come to your japa period, you say, oh, God, here it go again. Sixteen rounds, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro <laughs> with a backpack. <laughs> so, you know, if you have that attitude, then after some time, you know, you might decide, well, I'll just go to Kirtans instead, <laughs> instead of chanting japa. So, yeah, it's... Uh, you have to have you have to see how to qualitize everything you do to make it better like that and then that actually is bhakti 
Mm -hmm. I'm putting that element of quality, even in hearing, anything you do, cleaning, taking prasadam, <laughs> all of it can be qualitized. And then it doesn't become old, boring, or mechanical. And also thinking how to improve. That's also keeps the devotee enlivened in Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada used to do that to keep us enlivened by giving us more services. <laughs> and that's a feature of good management, learning how to add to the devotee's services without breaking them. <laughs> that's an art. <laughs> Not to break the devotees by giving them more, but offering more services in order to, for them to, you know, rise to the occasion. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we'll stop here. So thank you very much. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai. Gaur Vemanandi Hari Hari Bo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.